and welcome back. A lot of you have asked for me to do two update videos, one on retinol and all the new generations of retinol that have come along since I last did a video. And this one is my new take on vitamin C. And it's, it's gonna have the same messages as before, but with newer products, new generation products. And a couple of people have said to me, can you go through some of the new products, the new formulations within vitamin C products, the different kind of bases, how to look for a decent vitamin C product and what they can do. So here is my modern update guide to vitamin C. Now, why should you be using vitamin C? And I should take this off, take these off because you're getting that horrible ring flash flare back in them. But I will have to put them back on to read the labels, obviously. Um, you need vitamin C in your skincare pretty much every day because along with retinol, which is vitamin A derivatives, vitamin C derivatives um, and pure L-ascorbic acid, which is the gold standard royalty of vitamin C, has a clinically proven active effect on the skin. At low levels, even down to 0.6%, it's proven to be a really good daily antioxidant, which is why for most people it should be a first step in the morning along with hyaluronic acid and glycerin and all those things that your skin might need before your moisturizer. And it acts as a, a barrier between you and the outside world. And so that sort of microscopic pollutants in the air and all those things that might stress and oxidize the skin are oxidizing instead the vitamin C. So it, it performs a barrier between you and the outside world. However, at higher levels, and that can be at 5% for sensitive skins and go right up to 25% for skins that are used to it. And I do suggest you build up slowly because a lot of skins are sensitive to high levels of vitamin C. It can have um, a brightening effect. It can lighten pigment, pigment problems. So for example, you know, am I pointing to the right side here? I've got to go and get these zapped. Regular use will lighten and brighten the skin. And by lighten, I don't mean bleach the skin, but I mean lighten pigment, clumps of pigmentation, either caused by sun damage or melasma. Um, and it can also boost collagen production. So it can, I dread to use the word anti-aging, uh, but it can have a, um, a slowing of the aging process effect in clinical trials. Um, and that effect can start at 5% and go right up to 25%. Now, why are there different percentages on the market? Well, if any of you have ever used the ordinary original gritty vitamin C L-ascorbic acid, I believe it was in a squalene base, and I can link to all my vitamin C videos below. I remember lying in bed thinking, God, when is this tingling and burning going to end? And the problem is, is that L-ascorbic acid cannot be put into a water base. It has to be put into an anhydrous base. That means water-free base. Because the minute you put it into water, it will dissolve and it will oxidize and then it becomes pretty much useless really quickly. So it's tend to be put into an anhydrous base. That's either an oil base or a solvent base, a squalene base, something like that. And it, it basically, if you don't put it in water, it doesn't dissolve, so it can be gritty and it can be unpleasant. And if you put it anywhere near your eyes or anywhere near any periorbital dermatitis or anywhere sensitive, or if you've got a cut on your skin, oh, you are going to feel it. So a little bit like retinol, at the higher levels, it can be unpleasant to use, which is why you need to build up slowly, but don't dismiss it just because it's at lower levels. So L-ascorbic acid is clinically proven to work. L-ascorbic acid is the purest form of vitamin C that you can put on your skin. It can start at 0.3% and go up to 25%. You might even see have seen higher. However, there are new generations of products around. There are, okay, so turn over your, your bottle, turn over whatever you're looking at. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the word ascorb. It could be ascorbyl, ascorbate, ascorbic. L-ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid, as I said, is the purest form. That's like the equivalent of using retinol on your skin. But as we know, retinol has derivatives. It has retinaldehyde and, and all those other sort of metabolic stepways up to the purest form of retinol. Vitamin C is really similar. It doesn't work in the same way, as in it isn't metabolized on the skin, um, but it is broken down on the skin to become the ascorbic acid that the skin needs, which is vitamin C. And it will be, sometimes it's a magnesium ascorbate or a magnesium ascorbyl. There are lots of different versions, but the key word to look for is ascorb. And in my opinion, it should really be in the first five or six um, actives in the inky list. So it's normally the top one will be, I mean, it won't be water, but it could be silicon, it could be squalene, whatever, it could be hyaluronic acid, and then you're looking for an ascorb. 
somewhere in that chemical name there will be the term escorb. So let's have a look at some classics that I've always loved and I continue to love. SkinCeutical CE Ferulic is still a gold standard. It's been around long, a long time and I know it's expensive. If you want to dupe, you need to look at the Timeless CE. Um, Timeless have, I think, a 20%. This is 15% um, score L-ascorbic acid with 1% alpha tocopherol, vitamin E, and 0.5% ferulic acid, which is another antioxidant. Now, here's the other thing about vitamin C. If you combine it with other antioxidants like vitamin E or ferulic, it is more powerful. It has a tendency to bounce back. They have this effect on each other that if you put vitamin C and vitamin E together, once they're oxidized, they can sort of unoxidize each other. So you have this, instead of having this amazing product that you put on your face and within two or three hours, it's no longer effective. They, they have this sort of bounce back effect. They have this change of electrons, which means that they are able to then reactivate each other, which is why if you get a really great combination of products, it makes sense. So the oldest form of vitamin C, <coughs> excuse me, that I've been using for years. Um, that is in a solvent base. Some people don't like that and they like a silicon base. A perfect example of a silicon based vitamin C would be vitamin C ceramide capsules from Elizabeth Arden. You'll know it's silicon because the minute you feel it, it will feel slippy and silicony and velvety. Now, here's the thing about the basis of vitamin C. If you get it in a silicon, the chances are at high levels, it's going to pill under your skin. And by high levels, I don't mean the vitamin C, I mean the silicon. So a lot of silicon-based vitamin C and squalene-based vitamin C products are too occlusive and too heavy to use in the morning. So even if there are low levels of vitamin C, uh, which ideally you would use a low level, level of vitamin C in the morning every single day and then a higher level in a sort of oily, silicony base at night because they won't layer under makeup well, even if they're a low level of vitamin C and they're in silicon, they're gonna be better used at night because the mere act of putting, layering silicons on your face, laying, laying really, sorry, that was my C frule, just settling into its boss, box. Um, the mere act of layering on oils and squalenes, they're just unpleasant. A lot of them are unpleasant to use in the day. They will start to peel off. You'll sit there one day and then you'll just, I was laughing about it once, you'll sit in a meeting, you go, what the hell's that? And your face will just start to peel off. It's not your skin peeling off, it's your makeup and the silicones and the squalene beginning to roll off your face. So think about the strength of the vitamin C, think about the form of vitamin C, then think about what the vitamin C is being carried in. Perfect case in point. Um, this is a C Firma Day Serum uh, by uh, Drunk Elephant. <clears throat> a gold standard product. It's, I mean, I don't know if the, the legal things are still going on between it and SkinCeuticals because I think there was a toing and froing about whether they'd copied some version of the formulation. Um, and then I think C, uh, SkinCeuticals, which is L'Oreal, the L'Oreal group brought a class action against Drunk Elephant and then Drunk Elephant won and then they came back. And I don't know what the current situation is. If any of you know, please join in below on the conversation. Um, one reason I like this is because See through it comes in a dropper. You all know the formulation. You you open it up. It's a airtight container. You put the dropper in, and then you're supposed to use it within six weeks. So it's a lot of money for six weeks. I personally think it lasts three to four months. If you keep it in a dark place, don't put it on a bathroom shelf in direct sunlight. Keep it somewhere fairly cool and dark. <clears throat> To me, it's still the easiest product to use. You put it on your face first thing in the morning with your hyaluronic acid. It sinks in in seconds. You clean your teeth. It's, there's no feeling of residual. There's no stickiness. It's just a really easy to use product. Well, that is strikingly similar. The only reason I like it more is because it comes in, and you can actually see this is beginning to oxidize around the, the top there. It comes in one of those really clever twist off caps. So you've got, you've got less oxidation coming here. The minute you put a vitamin C product and it is exposed to sunlight or it's exposed to UV light or it's exposed to water um, and it's exposed to daylight and oxygen, then it starts to oxidize. So, I mean, <clears throat> drunk elephant is hit and miss, but my God, that packaging is brilliant. Uh, Paula's Choice has always, always, always argued that vitamin C is an important product to use. However, important active to use. 
However, they have a range of vitamin C's in their, in their products. They have vitamin C's in, in some of their cleansers, in some of their moisturizers, in some of their serums. But I think one of the nicest ones to use is the C15 Super Booster. It comes in a, again, a sort of light, opaque bottle that you open up and you put the dropper in. I won't open that because obviously the minute I do, it'll start to oxidize. And you can use that neat on your skin first thing in the morning in a very similar way to you'd use CE Ferulic. However, um, it's been formulated to drop it into everything, into a normal serum, into a moisturizer. And it's a fairly small bottle, so it's quite easy to go through in the time. It's a really great product. There aren't any products here that I'm not recommending. I recommend all these products. You've just got to pick and choose what you want. So they're proper old school L ascorbic acid products. There are new generation of products coming through. Um, perfect case in point are vitamin C's used in formulations with other products, which I think is really interesting. I've mentioned this before. This is C50 blemish night treatment by the Inky List. It's utterly unique. Um, I haven't tested it, but I put the word out there that I thought it was interesting. I don't get pigmented scars, but this is a, a form of vitamin C with salicylic acid. And what I love about the Inky List is it's so clearly marked on it. So they've got the Inky List on the side and the first ingredient is water, which shows you that it's not an L ascorbic acid. Um, it has to be a water soluble form. And in this case, it's sodium ascorbyl phosphate uh, with salicylic acid. Now, the reason that, that is interesting is you've got a new generation, more stable, less effective form of vitamin C, but here it's combined with salicylic acid. And the idea is it's to target um, blemishes that cause and leave hyperpigmentation or scarring marks. Really clever. So many of you have come back to me to say you've tracked this down and you used it and it's a game changer. Other products <clears throat> that are around. Dermalogica introduced a really lovely vitamin C earlier this year and that is their Biolumin vitamin C. Um, and again, you see, I'm going to look at it here it's a combination of a form of vitamin C and hyaluronic acid, which means that you've got two steps in one, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, the ingredients are, the first ingredient is water, which means it's not going to be an L ascorbic acid. The second ingredient is glycerin, and then you've got uh, a lactic acid in, you've got a chia seed extract, and then you've got peptides. So you've got a scorbyl methicillano pectinate, a new form of vitamin C. See, again, it's in those top five, six, seven active ingredients. But again, you've got to look at the formulation here because you've got a combination of uh, glycerin and water and peptides. So it's sort of your, you don't really need a glycerin hydrator. You don't really need a hyaluronic acid. You don't really need a vitamin C and a peptide because it's all in one, which explains why it's more expensive. Now, really lovely, easy to use daily, goes on your skin. So it's beautifully under makeup formulation. I personally would use all of those products right up and around my eye. But you know what? I'm a tough son of a gun. However, a lot of people cannot use vitamin C around the eyes. I mean, we've only gone up to say 15% here on L ascorbic acid, so I don't have a problem putting C for Ulig or the Drunk Elephant or the Paulus Choice right around my eyes, but people do. So now you've got new generations vitamin C eye products to be used right around the eyes. And this is the thing you see, if you're sensitive or you've got any irritation or your eyelids are sensitive or you've got pigmentation around here or fine lines, you'll want to use vitamin C around your eyes, but it can be tough to use. You don't want to use gritty, silicon rich, oily formulations around your eyes. So you've got a new generation of vitamin C eye products coming out. This is the Dermalogica Biolumin C Eye Serum. And here you've got the Brighten Eye C, C Cream from the Inky List. And I've talked about this before, I'm really loving this. It's got a lovely cooling head applicator. It's a super light cream. It's really, really pleasant to use. And the Biolumin has exactly the same form of vitamin C, but in a lighter, easy to use formula around your eyes. Uh, <clears throat> of course, they weren't the first people to do vitamin C eye serums. And I predicted in a feature that I've got coming up in the Times that I think vitamin C eye serums are gonna be huge in 2020. One of the first people to do them specifically for the eye area was Drunk Elephant, because they realized that there were certain people that couldn't use their C firma around their eyes. So they did C Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream, and it's 
a, a form of vitamin C plus peptides, perfect combination around the eyes, it really is. Now, the, you, again, you see, you know here that this is a different form of vitamin C to this because this is solvent-based, this is water-based. And it is the active ingredient, the first active ingredient is water, and then you've got glycerin, you've got sodium, ascorbyl, phosphate, number five or six on the active ingredient list. So often eye products have a form of vitamin C that is not the L-ascorbic. And the reason is because L-ascorbic at active levels tingles and that's not pleasant around the eye. It makes complete sense. Other products that I really like that have been used on the launched on the market, um, specifically vitamin C, and then we'll go on to general antioxidants that contain lower levels of vitamin C. I think the Beauty Pie Vitamin C um, Superdose is a really lovely product. I've talked about this range before. It's really reasonably priced. It's beautifully packaged. Do you remember I talked about their, um, they have an SPF 25 in this range that I really like. This is Superdose Vitamin C, um, and it's got super vitamin C at 3% and oxygen skin. Ugh. I hate trademark made up names for whatever oxygen skin is. Just actually tell us what the active ingredient is. Don't trademark some weird obscure name. Sorry, bugbear of mine completely. Um, now let's have a look. First active ingredient is water. And water, by the way, is an active ingredient. It hydrates skin, obviously. Um, glycerin. I mean, who's not to love a glycerin based product? And then you've got uh, C15, 19, Alkane, ascorbyl, tetra, solpalmitate. And then you've got to silicone. get the anti-pigmentation, collagen boosting levels that you would in an L-ascorbic acid, pure 15%, 20% product. But what you are is gonna have something that's easy to use every single day. And the important thing about vitamin C is, if it's unpleasant to use, you won't use it every day. And if you don't use it every day, you won't see results. These products are nice to use. It's lightweight, it's beautifully formulated, it's a really lightweight, super rich, hydrating cream that you'd use all over your face. It's, it's just a lovely product, feels, very, very, very similar to the SPF, which is also a beautiful product, beautifully packaged. My bugbear is the weird trademark name for one of the active ingredients. But the vitamin C peptide combination molecule in this is lovely. It's a really lovely product. It's a relatively low level for a vitamin C, but you're going to be able to use it every single day. And if you're looking for a moisturizer or an antioxidant cream in the morning, that's a nice one to try. But they're filtering down onto the high street. Everybody knows I love Eucerin. It's a really great range. Um, it, it's so overlooked. I remember when my sister had a rosacea and if she didn't get, you know, expensive high-end skincare from me, she used to use the anti-redness range from rosacea. She said it was amazing. It was without a doubt a brilliant range. Um, they have a hyaluron fill vitamin C booster. Their hyaluron fill is a really great hyaluronic acid range on the high street that you can get everywhere. Um, they always call it dermatological skincare, which I think is an interesting one. Now, what's interesting about this is it's a 10%, it's a they call it pure vitamin C. So let's check the active ingredient in it and make sure it is L-ascorbic acid. And guess what? It is ascorbic acid and glycerin. Interestingly enough, the first ingredient in it is water. And I tell you why. It's because if you look at the way this has to be, and I'm gonna open this up for you and show it to you, is it comes with a little seal foil on the back and it's designed to last for seven days. And what you do is you push it. And the minute you push it, you activate the vitamin C into the base, which is water-based. And from that moment on, it starts to oxidize and they're giving it roughly seven days supply. So that's what you're doing. But the advantage is you've got an easy to use water weight glycerin light rich serum that is actively mixed within the product. A little bit like the fresh pressed for, uh, vitamin C from Clinique. However, this is so reasonably priced, obviously, because it's usury. I'm going to finish with three generic antioxidants. And if you buy an antioxidant, you should check that somewhere in the active ingredient list, it has some level of vitamin C. So let's just go through three of my favorites and check that they do. Um, one of my favorites that I really like that's really easy to use every day and you could easily layer under 
the vitamin C from Beauty Pie is the Beauty Pie Daily Vitamin Defense Serum. And if you go down the active ingredient list here, it's water, so you know it's not gonna have L ascorbic acid in unless you um, dispense it actively within your product like you do with the uh, Eucerin one. But if you go down the active ingredient list here, you'll find it's got um, uh, tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and then it's got ascorbyl palmitate. So it's a water soluble form of vitamin C at a lower level, but you've got it in a cocktail of antioxidants. So I would use it in addition to a vitamin C product. Use that one during the day. You could use that one at night or layer that one under that one. Paula's Choice always do great antioxidants. I'm really loving the Ultralight Super Antioxidant Concentrate Serum with Hyaluronic Acid. Let's have a look what form of vitamin C it's got in it. The first ingredient is water, so you know it's not gonna be an L ascorbic acid. Um, oh, I do love glycerin in a product. Let's have a look. Let's go down. Hyaluronic acid, resveratrol, niacinamide, uh, quercetin. I mean, God, that woman knows how to formulate products. That's basically tick, 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 all the best antioxidants. Somewhere down here, there will be uh, tetrahexadyl decal ascorbate. It's a, again, it's the ascorb. It's a form of stable vitamin C that they can put in water-based products. And then uh, the Allegra, um, if you look at the active ingredients here, you know you've got water as the first one, but you've got very high up the list. The second, third ingredient is ascorbyl glucoside, another form of water-soluble vitamin C that stays more stable. All three of those are lovely daily antioxidants. I always feel like I go down a rabbit hole when I start talking about active ingredients, but vitamin C and retinol are important. What you need to know is which form of vitamin C are you choosing? l ascorbic acid is still the gold standard, but it can be unpleasant to use at high levels. It starts at 0.3%, 0.6%. It's clinically proven to be active as an antioxidant and can go up to 25%. The higher you go, the grittier, the more unpleasant, the more oily, the more silicony it's going to feel and it will tingle. So you can't use it around your eyes. So look for lower levels or look for specific products that have been formulated to be used around the eyes. The chances are they're not an L-ascorbic acid, although I do use L-ascorbic acid around my eyes. I use my C Ferulic most days around my eyes. Look for specific products that have been formulated to use around the eye because it will target the darkness, it will target pigmentation and it will target fine lines. And if it's used to formulate it, it's formulated to use around the eyes, you can put it over the top here, which is really important because we all get crepey up here as we get older. Look for vitamin C in combination with other active ingredients because that is happening. There will be forms of ascorb, ascorbyl, ascorbate, all those things with other active ingredients. That's happening now because these new generation of vitamin Cs are coming through. So you can use it at high levels at night, you can use it at a lower level as an effective antioxidant during the day, or you can use it morning and night. Can vitamin C and retinol be used together? Yes, they can. They're often formulated in the same products. However, if you're using a retinol at 1% and you're using a vitamin C at 20% or 25% and you put them together on your skin at night, the chances are your skin's gonna tingle. If you're lucky and it doesn't, good for you. If like me, however, and I've got pretty tough skin, you'll notice it will start to get sensitized and it will tingle. So be careful, build up slowly. You can build up your level of vitamin C slowly, just as you can build up with your percentages of retinol slowly. They are still the gold standard active ingredients in skincare. If anybody launches a skincare line and they do not have some form of vitamin C or some form of retinol in it, don't take it seriously. That's all I'm saying, because they are still the gold standard active ingredients. And as the world went mad for forms of retinol last year, I feel that most of the big skincare companies are gonna go pretty crazy for vitamin C this year. You need it in your skincare routine, no matter what age you are, either preventatively as an antioxidant or reparatively at relatively high levels. If you're serious about vitamin C though, do look for L-ascorbic acid and you need to start at 5% for sensitive skin and you can go up to 20 and higher if your skin's pretty tough. But take it slowly and choose a formulation you like. Choose a formulation that you're gonna use every day because there's no point in buying an expensive product and leaving it on the side because it will oxidize within three or four months unless it's daily dose like Elizabeth Arden or, you know, that's obviously been in my cupboard a while, but the minute I push that bottom, that's that bottom, that little button that releases the l ascorbic acid into the water base, then you know you're gonna to have to use it within a few days. Has that helped? I hope it's helped. 
Uh, you're probably gonna have to run this back and watch this again. I still stand by vitamin C as being one of the three or four most important active ingredients you can put on your skin. There are various different ways to suit everybody and to suit every part of your face. If you're going to use it morning and night here to here, as usual, don't forget your chest like I did. Um, and also, can I just say, oh, look at my scars on my shoulder. It, I've been using silicon scar strips and so I've got no pigmentation in them and no redness, but they're a little bit denty. And I su suspect that means that, I mean, it must be hard to stitch up a, a shoulder um, because it's such a pulley area, isn't it? Pulley area? It's such a, an area that's under tension on your skin and you move constantly. Um, so any advice, I'm going to get somebody on to talk about scars and how to heal scars. Any advice on how to fill dented scars? Short of having filler in them. I mean, it's not bad enough to have filler in them, obviously. Um, but I will get somebody on to talk about scars and how to heal scars because I know it's a really, really popular uh, subject that so many of you requested. I'm going to do an update on a retinols as well because it needs to be done. But they are currently my most interesting take on vitamin C. Old school, new school, new ways to apply them to your face and new active ingredients that, that vitamin C has been combined with. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll put all the details of the products down below. This has been a much overdue much requested video i hope you enjoy ask me any questions probably more likely to get back to you on instagram i must admit where this will also be flagged up but i will jump in on youtube as well and answer questions see you soon